The criminal case against Michael Sussman continues. Special Prosecutor John Durham filing a motion in response to the defendant's attempt to dismiss the indictment. We're going to go through this. You can see this involves the United States of America, represented by John Durham, the special prosecutor. We have Michael Sussman as the defendant in this case, and this is the government's opposition. This is their response to the motion to dismiss the indictment. You can see that Mr. Sussman, by his counsel, they wanted to dismiss the charges, all of the criminal charges against him, and they made the reason for it as we're gonna break down, but this is the response now. So they're saying, court, dismiss this case. The prosecutors, the government are saying, do not dismiss this case, here's why. And as we can see, Durham is writing, he says, for the reasons stated below, their request to have this dismissed should be denied. Let's see what the rationale is says here, the defendant, now this is the government writing, says the defendant, Mr. Sussman, which is the former lawyer representing some of the Democratic interests who went and sat down and had conversations with government agents at the FBI and CIA, he apparently was charged, according to Durham here, in a one-count indictment with making a materially false statement to the FBI. This is in violation of U.S. code. Less than two months before the 2016 election. Of course, we remember that. We talked a lot about this. He was a lawyer at a large international law firm, Law Firm One, serving as counsel to the Clinton campaign and met with the FBI general counsel in Washington, D.C. He provided them with details and information. These were the white papers that demonstrated that Trump was talking with the Russians. This was Alpha Bank, Russia Bank One here. And what they're saying is the indictment says the defendant, Mr. Sussman, lied in that meeting, falsely stating to general counsel that he was not giving them this information on behalf of anybody. Turns out he was. It says, in fact, the defendant had dissembled these allegations on at least behalf uh, on, on behalf of at least two specific clients including tech executive number one and internet company one as as well as the clinton campaign you can see a lot of different people that he's sort of working for the defendants billing records according to this motion repeatedly billed the clinton campaign for this work so as he goes and has conversations with the fbi he's he jots it down in his billing log and writes working on this Russian story for the Clinton campaign. So he knew what he was doing, and he didn't disclose that to the federal agents. Communicated with another law partner who was also communicating at the time as general counsel to the Clinton campaign. So why is this problematic? It's because the false statement was material to the FBI's investigation. You can see in paragraph B here, we have Durham by his uh, sort of uh, deputy attorneys writing saying the defendant's false statements to the FBI general counsel, meaning Michael Sussman's statements, was plainly material because it misled the general counsel about a critical fact of this inquiry, specifically that he was saying these, these statements, proffering this line of, of, of make-believe, really, on behalf of two specific clients, one of which was on the opposing presidential campaign, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. We're in the middle of this election. He's going to the FBI saying, I've got a lot of dirt on Donald Trump without saying that he's working for Hillary. The defendant's effort to mislead the FBI in this manner during the height of the presidential election plainly could have influenced the FBI's decision-making in a number of ways if they knew they could have done things differently. The defendant, Mr. Sussman's core arguments, to the contrary, rest on a flawed premise, saying that the FBI, the only relevant decision they had was of a binary nature. You know, either we start an investigation or we don't. They're saying it goes beyond that. Here, Sus Sussman, his assertion conveniently ignores the factual and the practical realities of how the FBI initiates and conducts investigations. So in his motion saying that this all should be dismissed, he's saying, you know, it wasn't even material to whether they were going to do their investigation or not. I gave them this white paper, this information, and they decided to do what they wanted to do with it. Had nothing to do with me. He's saying that's not how this works. In fact, there's a lot that goes into this. He says the government expects that the evidence at trial will prove that the FBI could have taken a number of steps prior to opening, quote, the full investigation, right? Many things they could have done. 
including but not limited to, quote, conducting an assessment, opening a preliminary investigation, delaying a decision until after the election, declining to investigate altogether, right? Four things they just listed there that they could have done. Indeed, a host of factors played into and play into how the FBI conduct their investigations. They have conversations and they do their specific sort of analysis and they decide whether to investigate things, right? A lot of things come up in criminal law that don't ever turn into crimes. We investigate it, eh, nothing there. Okay, people hire us sometimes to represent people when they are under investigation and we reach out to law enforcement and say, I know you think there's something here, but there isn't anything here and it goes away. Indeed, a host of factors play into the decision making here had the defendant truthfully informed the FBI general counsel that he was shilling on behalf of Hillary Clinton, as opposed to, quote, merely acting as a good citizen, FBI general counsel and other personnel might have asked additional questions related to the matter. You know, they could have said, for example, whether the defendant's clients harbored any ill will towards their political opponent. If he would have said, uh, I've got this information, it's very powerful, and I'm here on behalf of the Hillary Clinton campaign, that lands a little bit differently than if he says, I'm just a good citizen here, I'm very concerned about this, because now we've got a conflict of interest. We have clear bias. Somebody's working literally for the oppositional campaign, now trying to enlist the federal government through the FBI and through the CIA to go after their political opponent. Don't think that that's relevant. Don't think that that's even material, is what his lawyers say. Well, Durham and the FBI obviously, I think, would feel differently. If they knew, maybe they could have said, how can we trust the reliability, the veracity of your information, given that you are conflicted to a high degree? Well, we'll see. Now we know that the court is going to issue a ruling on this. We see here the conclusion is from John Durham and his co-counsel or his deputy attorney's assistant special counsel. It says, for the foregoing reasons, the court should deny the motion to dismiss the indictment and let this case move forward. So Sussman files the motion to dismiss. We've got Durham responding to it. And what we're going to see is a reply coming back around from Sussman's team in the near future. They're going to say, well, thank you for your opposition to our motion to dismiss, but here's why we think you should grant it anyways, judge. And we'll see what the judge does with that. And I hope you join us as we continue to cover this case and many others. Don't forget to subscribe or like or follow or comment because I want to hear from you and look forward to seeing you on the next one.